Hi everybody, um, I decided to make this extra video going over a few examples of some calculus problems. Um, so we know that you've never, you've probably not taken multivariable calculus before. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't do problems in multiple dimensions. All right, so, so um, it's my goal to convince you in this video by doing three, these three examples um, of how you, of the, the fact that you can use just one dimensional calculus to prove um, properties about objects in multiple dimensions. So we'll find the area of a disk. So you already know the answers of these things. Um, the area of a disk is pi r squared. The volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. It's capital R. And the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. But we're going to prove these things. Okay, so maybe we'll use one thing to prove another one. So I, uh, this is arranged in the order of difficulty, roughly. Um, so actually, we're going to use, so even though, um, even though we'll do three last, we're going to use this result to prove uh, this result. So we're going to use 4 pi r squared to prove the 4 thirds pi r cubed. Um, but, but later on, we'll, we'll prove this one. Okay, so let's just jump into it. Okay, um... So to find the area of a solid disk, uh, and this is going to be what we're going to do throughout the whole video. So the whole disk is all of this area right here. It's a two-dimensional object, the solid disk. And, and this is the basic idea. A, a, a two-dimensional object is a sum of a bunch of one-dimensional objects, an integral of a bunch of one-dimensional objects. Okay, And just like, so for number two, this 3D volume is going to be an integral over 2D shells. And the sphere is going to be an integral of 1D, um, like, strips or ribbons. So that, that the object isn't quite as clear, so that's why it's last. Um, but the disk is one of the easier cases. So, so the disk you can think of as a bunch of rings that are all combined together. Okay, so, um, so the disk overall has radius r. I lost my color here. So the disk, the disk, the the radius of the whole disk is capital R, and the thing we're going to integrate over, we have to give it a different name. So this will be lowercase r. <clears throat> so if we took the area of this ring right here, and then took the area of the next ring right, that's just like surrounding it, and the area of the next one, etc. If we started from the very center and went all the way out to r, to capital R then we would get the area of the total disk. Uh, so let me write it this way. The area of the whole disk, uh, C or K, I don't know. The area of the whole disk is uh, the integral of a bunch of little contributions to the area of the disk. So I'm going to integrate over all rings. And this is the area of each ring. OK, it's OK. To, so th this is probably something that you're not, not used to from math classes, writing it this ab abstractly. So the area of the disk is the integral of the area of all the rings. So what's the area of this ring? Um, so it's the circumference. So, so uh, this thing, th this ring has some length around here. Uh, so the length is 2 pi r. It's the circumference of this ring times the width is going to be dr. Okay, so the, you might think of this as a two-dimensional thing, where you know we're integrating over a bunch of areas, but we can immediately simplify and write it as an integral of 1d, an integral over just one dimension, that is this lowercase r. So we're integrating 2 pi r dr, and r is going to go from 0 to capital R. So why is this the area? Um, of that little ring. So imagine, imagine you took that ring away from the disc and you're just looking at this ring and you cut it like right here. And then, so you cut it right there and then you unravel it. It's gonna have total length, that's the circumference of the ring, two pi r. And then the thickness is gonna be just dr. So as long as this ring is really, really small, you can unravel it and it'll look basically like a rectangle. Okay, this is the nice thing about working with these infinitesimal quantities. Right? You can you can just treat a ring like, you know, cut it, unravel it, it looks like a, a rectangle. It's you know, it has the same area as a rectangle. You couldn't say that overall for the whole disk, 
right? There's no way you could cut it and say, oh, this looks like a rectangle. Um, but this is sort of the magic of, of infinitesimals. So finishing up this integral, um, so we integrate two, so integral of r is one half r squared, um, evaluated from r equals zero to r, and you get pi r squared, pi times capital R squared. So you already knew that the area of a disk is pi r squared, but you could use the circumference of a, of a circle to prove the area of a disk. Okay, so notice we just started with the circumference of a circle and we proved the area of a disk from that. So we took the 1D case and we proved 2D area from that. Okay. Uh, second example, find the volume of, uh, of a sphere. So we're going to use uh, the fact that we know the area of a um, spherical shell. Okay, so let me write down, so this will be the whole sphere uh, of radius capital R. And then we're going to look at, so just like we, we, we treated the disk as a sum of uh, rings, we're going to treat the sphere as a sum of a bunch of spherical shells. Okay, so this is a spherical shell. I'm going to give it infinitesimal thickness. So this is going to be at lowercase r. So that's like the radius that that shell happens to be. But, but we're leaving the lowercase r general. It could be any value from 0 to capital R, because we're going to integrate over all these shells. And it's going to have thickness dr. So very similar to what we did before, but in one higher dimension. So the volume of our whole sphere is the integral of all these tiny contributions. V is integral dv over the whole. So, so you know, just write down the words that describe exactly what you're doing. So we're the volume of the sphere is the sum of the volumes, the, the tiny contribution to the, to the volume uh, from the spherical shells. Now normally you wouldn't see this written down because a shell doesn't have volume, a shell, shell has area, but, but giving it this, this infinitesimal thickness, uh, the shells do have some volume. Um, so shells of thickness. So because they actually do have some thickness, uh, they, they do have some volume right there. Okay, um, so the volume of each shell is the surface area of the shell. So this is the analog of this step right here. Um, so, so the like 2D area was one dimensional circumference times the infinitesimal. Right? So here we can take the area, the surface area of the shell 4 pi r squared, and then multiply by the thickness of that shell to get the volume of the shell. Okay. So this step isn't uh, maybe quite as clear as this one, because this one you could imagine cutting it like right there uh, and then unraveling it and it looks like a rectangle. This one, um, like you, you could cut it up and lay it all flat, um, but, but you would have to cut it up into like infinitely many pieces, right? So, so imagine you took, you took each tiny little uh, piece of the shell, you cut it up right there, and you, then you laid it all flat. Um, the area would be the 4 pi r squared, because that was the area of the, the surface, and then all of those little pieces that you cut out had thickness dr. So the volume of that like flat sheet would be the, the area, the total area times the thickness. So really, this, this would look like a, a 3D rectangle, um, but it would require a lot more cutting up than, than previously. That's why this one's maybe a little more complicated to think about. OK, so plugging this in, the volume of our sphere uh, is the integral. Uh, r is going to go from 0 to capital R of 4 pi r squared dr. So you can take out the 4 pi. Integral of r squared is one third r cubed, so you get four thirds pi r cubed. All right. Okay, let's do the last one. So the last one, um, we're not going to assume that we knew that the surface area of a sphere was four pi r squared. So we we, we assumed we kind of to do two we had to 
already know the answer to three, but maybe we didn't know that the, the surface area of a spherical shell was four pi r squared. So how would you go about proving that? Um, okay, so I'm gonna write down the whole spherical shell. So this looks a lot like the picture that I drew in number two, um, but keep in mind, number two, we were talking about the whole inside, the whole interior for the whole volume. Here, we're just looking at the surface. Okay, so the whole surface, And nothing, on, we're not looking at anything on the inside, we're just considering the surface, and we just want to know the area of that, given that the, uh, the whole surface has radius capital R. So what we can do is, and this is what's done on your homework, um, take a little piece of this. Um, so we're going to look at some angle. So at the very end, we're going we're gonna to integrate over angles. Uh, going from 0 to 180 degrees. Um, and at this moment, we're just looking at the angle. So we're looking at some angle theta. Uh, and we're going from theta to theta plus d theta. Okay, and so what that means is that we're looking at this whole strip of area right here. So it's all of the area within this. So this, this wraps around. This goes up and then wraps, you know, on the on the back side of this. So it's like a strip of area right there. Um, so looking at this edge on, uh, so if you look at it from the right like this, this is supposed to be an eyeball. Uh, it looks like a circle. Right. So it has a circle. It's a circle of some radius r, where r is this right here, and so this strip, so just like what we did before, uh, this strip has this area. It's 2 pi r dr. Except here the thickness isn't just this, but it's along the circumference. So in other words, if we, so if this is going to be infinitesimally small. Um, but dr isn't really what's relevant here. This would be dr along that direction. But, but what's, what's important for the area, so imagine you were able to, to slice out just the blue stuff and cut it, you know, just like we thought about before, cut it along here. So you took just the blue stuff, you cut it there, you laid it out flat. It would be 2 pi r for the circumference of this thing. And then if you laid it out flat, it would be the whole uh, arc length of this thing. Okay, that would be the that would be the, the area right there. So the contribution to the area is two pi r um, times ds. So this we're gonna have to clean up a little bit. We're gonna have to write this a different way because r is changing over. You know, if we look at a different theta, um, the r is gonna change for different strips. Uh, and then ds also, we don't really know how to integ integrate that. So, so in other words, we can't just do a, the, the area of the spherical shell is the integral of dA is integral of 2 pi r ds. Because r, you can't just take out of the integral and say that this is r times 2 pi s or something. You, we have to write this in, in a more careful way as something we can actually integrate over. And theta is how, what we've used to describe exactly... Um, We've used theta to define where that strip is in a more precise way. So we need to rewrite theta, or sorry, we need to rewrite r and ds in terms of theta. Okay, so um, I don't want to clutter up this diagram too much, so I'm going to copy it over. Um, okay, so... Uh, R, so let's see, let me get rid of some of this stuff. Um, this is R right here. Uh, and this right here is the radius of the spherical shell. So lowercase r, capital R, and then as long as our d theta is small, theta is all roughly the same. This, this is part of the tricks that you get to learn when you're working with infinitesimals. Like theta and theta plus d theta are the same thing if you're just talking about the finite angle theta. 
Um, so the point of this is that we can, so this is a right triangle right there, and we can write, it looks like sine theta is the thing that will relate them. Sine theta equals R over capital R. Or in other words, lowercase r is R sine theta. So the reason we like this is that when we plug it into here, capital R is constant, we can take it out of the integral sign, and theta is the thing that we're gonna integrate over. So we've written it in terms of the variable that we're gonna integrate over. So remember, this is using 1D calculus. It's just that we have to take all these other variables and write it in terms of our one, one variable. Uh, likewise, for ds, so ds, you're gonna use the, the um, arc length formula from math. So ds is r times d theta. So we're gonna plug this in, and we're gonna plug this in to our da formula. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna write da is two pi, now lowercase r is gonna appear right here, two pi, I'm gonna super color coordinate here, two pi r sine theta. That's two pi r, and then the ds is r d theta. Okay. So, yeah. So I'm just rewriting what we already had in terms of now just one variable we can integrate over. So this is two pi r squared sine theta d theta is dA. This is perfect. Now we're almost there, because now the area of our spherical shell is the integral over all the little strips of area, dA, and we've parameterized each strip at, in terms of theta. So this is 2 pi r squared sine theta d theta, and we're integrating from theta goes from 0 to pi, 0 to 180 degrees. So almost all this stuff <clears throat> is constant, right? The 2 pi r squared, and then integral from 0 to pi of sine theta d theta, um, the integral of sine theta is minus cosine theta. Uh, so minus cosine of pi minus negative cosine of zero. <laughs> uh, this winds up being a one plus one, or a factor of two. So the area of the shell is, so two pi r squared times two is four pi r squared. And this is exactly what we expect. We already kind of knew that the area of the shell was 4 pi r squared, but we proved it using calculus, and just the fact that we knew uh, a circle has circumference 2 pi r. Okay, I hope this helps uh, understand some of the calculus magic that's going on. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.